Hello, so I managed to get hold of this recently. I, I got it because I didn't really know where it was initially. It looked just looked really quite interesting. And it is in a way quite interesting and it's not what I thought it was. So when I got it, I slowly brought it up to voltage and it didn't work at all. The first thing I looked at doing was uh, replacing the CRT. This is the one that was in it. And um, as you can see the back of it, uh, is all wobbling. It might have been easily to easy to fix, but it turns out searching up the uh, VCR 139AU, I managed to find a replacement, and there still it seems like a plentiful stock of it uh, for about 15 pounds for a new CRT. I was I figured. It's worth a risk, it's worth a go. Let's see if we can get it to work. So I, I replaced it and it started working. And at that point is when I did this video. Is it? Yeah, what the heck is it? We're in the workshop uh, in the museum and uh, I've managed to just get this going. Swapping the tube and a few capacitors and it's sort of doing something, but I have no idea what it is. It says Meridian. I think that's something to do with clocks. Uh, Johnny says that Meridian was a TV channel in near Epsom, Surrey. So maybe it's something to do with that. Um, there's a knob here that does something. The screen now does that. It didn't do anything before. There's a volume. I'll show you the speaker in a little bit. And there's this knob, which is just minutes per day. You can have it 12 minutes slower or uh, 12 minutes extra. Is it a master clock or something like that? There's another knob here. And yeah, looking inside, there's a quartz crystal, a tube quartz crystal. There's a bunch of stuff. Got to swap that capacitor still, but it's doing something. And the speaker is making a so what could it be what could it be i think it needs a bit more work but knowing what it is might help uh, it because yeah not got a clue at the minute so yeah after that video it shed a lot more light on what it was obviously i didn't really know what to search for to find what this was when i was searching up meridian uh and sort of the controls and stuff it didn't really come up with much information but now people have mentioned it's a it's a clock calibrator it's a watch calibrator it makes so much sense because it, it really does if you notice in that since that video there is slightly something different at the front well uh what i've been doing over the last uh, couple of weeks is just slowly basically uh slowly uh swapping the capacitors and um in the next video you're about to see uh what i did was well basically how it goes is um there's a there was a there's a pickup uh, mount that you would put a watch on that basically has a microphone inside of it and it would plug into this input right here. Nowhere to be seen, I haven't seen one, I haven't managed to find one, so I put a jack socket into it so you could plug in a microphone and stuff and it seemed like a fun interactive way of making something interesting with it uh, for the museum, for people coming along. So uh, that's this video. You notice that the oscillator on the screen is actually starting to look a lot cleaner. Well, since then, I've been um, replacing some of the capacitors here and there. I did some before the first video, but I just, um, as and when I was able to find the right capacitors, I plonked them in because I haven't got a massive amount of them. So far, that's all of them that have been uh, pulled out and swapped over. I've just got hold of these ones now. These are 100 nanofarad, uh, so gonna use these next plop them in where, as and where, and then just slowly bring it back to life. It's quite lucky that it was, uh, it started working reasonably quickly after replacing a few capacitors, but it will just be, I've, since I've got this far, I may as well see how smooth the, uh, the actual, uh, the curve, the oscillator on the screen is really supposed to be because I haven't really seen any uh, video examples of it running. So um, unless somebody shares some links below, uh, yeah. So the plan is to basically, it's basically just gonna repurpose it to be a bit of a different uh, visual exercise because, you know, it's not really much use um, for somebody who hasn't, you know, doesn't calibrate calibrate clocks and it's quite a, quite an odd, quite a funky niche. So this, the fact that this can now be plugged into anything really, uh, the cool thing is, is you can hear the speaker out the back with whatever you plug in because originally the speaker, which is right here, uh, you were able to hear the um, the watches to see if it sounded healthy, I'm guessing. So yeah, the way it works, you can see this printout here. What you do is uh, if it's, um, it's sort of like a, a strobe tuner, 
needs a bit of a clean as well in here, but I figured I'd get it working before I give it a good clean. Uh, so if the uh, ring, if the lines in the ring are rotating backwards, it means it's running too slowly. If it's, rate, it's rotating forwards, it's meaning it's running too quickly. And you can find out how exactly how how quick, how far it is out of calibration by adjusting this dial, which says minutes per day. So if you think it's running slowly, you kind of do this until the uh, lines on the curve, like in a like in a strobing tra uh, like in a strobing uh, tuner, uh, you can stop them, and then if it stops at this point, it'll be f the the clock is three and a half minutes too slow per day. So it needs adjustment to get back to you know proper. I'm just doing it nice and quick and nasty. Some of the resistors might need a little bit of a looking as well, and uh, just have a little bit of fun with it. You know, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Don't do it like that. You're supposed to replace capacitors like that. So we got a capacitor in there. Let's let's plug it in and see what it's doing. So every time you every time I've been putting one in, I've been um turning it on. See how it's going. So get out of the way, turn it on. Let it warm up. been off for quite a while this time so it's going to take a moment. It's becoming every, every with every other capacitor it's getting uh, a little bit better. There's time divisions of the speed of the curve. I'm gonna go and get the microphone and we'll have another go. So let's turn it on again. I've just done another capacitor again as well. We can see how we can pretend to be a watch now. So let's give it a go. You can see how it's slowly moving when So in the museum, this is behind a clear case with a microphone at the front where you can talk into and just see what it does. Obviously, the lower you get, the less uh, spikes there are in the, cur in the curve. Right, that's working. Let's see if there are any of these kind of capacitors in there. Any of the 100 nanofarads. And then we'll get back onto this video in a little bit. Upon reading this one, it's actually slightly larger. So we're going for a bigger capacitor, which is right here. Beautiful. This capacitor is slightly larger than it, so we'll check if it affects the time base or was it for smoothing. We'll find out now, shall we? I haven't managed to find a schematic for this, so just fumbling in the dark. Right, where's that microphone again? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So, there we go, there's a little bit. We're waiting for, I'm waiting for another couple of capacitors to turn up. Testing some of these uh, resistors down here. That one's about, that one's about right. That one's how it should be. 1k8. It's getting there. It's coming along. I think I might.
Nice. As time goes on, it does seem to get a lot more circular. And now when the adjustments, you can see them slowly moving. When it's in zero, it basically stays in the same way and it rotates forwards and it rotates backwards. It's pretty blooming cool. And maybe it's supposed to get a little bit more circular. Yeah, hopefully as the as and when the uh, capacitors turn up, that might get a little bit better. But, but I have something else to show you. So when I was looking around for information on this Meridian clock calibrator, well, I just happened upon another one, a slightly newer version. Here, how good is that? Look at that. Funnily enough, they're pretty much exactly the same, but they do vary in a little bit, as it's obvious, as you can see. They're very much the same size. They're actually very similar layout. But before we compare them, I brought a Variac along. I'm gonna slowly turn this one up and see if it actually comes to life at all. Uh, I haven't done a massive amount to it yet. I just had a look. It looks very clean, actually. You can tell there's um, there's been some advancements. I've changed the uh, mains power plug and I've forgotten to actually bolt this um, power capacitor back in since changing the power plug, the power cable. I'll quickly do that. Yet again, it hasn't come with the transducer clock pickup that it's supposed to plug into it. In fact, the input of it is actually around the back on this one. It's right right here. So before we go further in, let's turn down the Variac. Oh no, there's the on switch. So we're gonna bring it up a little bit and we're gonna just let it come to life as, we're, as and when it decides and if it decides to come to life. That's the other question is, whether it even wants to come to life. So I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit. It's got a quartz, it's got a valve, vacuum tube quartz, the same as this one here. It's a very similar layout, but just slightly different. It's, it's quite interesting how it's progressed. I'm, I have no idea on the years on these. This one has a similar problem, it seems, with the cathode ray, but let's hope it might still be making a connection. All of the tubes are starting to glow. There is a very faint sound of an oscillator coming through, but um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna get a few more spare parts and we'll have a look at this for another day. But let's just have a look at the differences between the two now, because it's quite interesting, because they're similar, but slightly different. So at the front, it seems largely the same controls, just a different layout. Uh, you've got the on and the volume, on and the volume. You've got the fine tune, I think, which is fine tune here. You got the minutes and uh, fast and slow dial here. That's the fast and uh, slow dial here. You have the different rates here, I think. That is the one here. Minutes and seconds. Don't think this one has it. And then there's this over here that I think is on these. There's not much documentation on this one, so figuring out the labels of it, but uh, it seems to work like this. So you could turn off and on the audio over here, have a spot and zero. It seems to be a bit more updated, but. Um, if we look underneath as well, you can see it's a lot, it's a very different uh, different beast entirely. It's very much improved this, but you've still got the same transformers. The big filtering capacitors, there was one larger one here, but I replaced it with some smaller ones. And then, yeah, the turret boards look to be largely the same. They're just uh, laid out a bit differently. And yeah, it's, it's very similar, but just a bit more refined um, on the back. The same setup again you've got speakers and you've got the adjustments for the screen one two three four five six one two three four five six i think it's up down left right there's a couple of other things focus and intensity um and then let's have a look on the top because that's even different as well on the top it's the same story it's it's very similar but slightly different so you've got this uh, secondary circuit that's right here um, that is very similar uh, it's got one less valve than on this one even though there are a couple of different valves that are sitting around in different places but um, yeah the uh, quartz one is lower mounted so it seems to have a bit more uh, stability this one is just in a this one's just in um, a socket itself maybe there was problems uh, you got the same same transfer exactly the same transformer. Uh, the screen, the CRT uh, tube is mounted slightly differently. Still got the same shielding, uh, but you've got it's slightly a lot higher up here. On here, you actually have a back rest for it to rest on. So maybe this was problematic, and that, that makes sense. But yeah, they're the same but different. So I've got some parts turning up to have a go at trying to get this one going again because as you saw it wasn't running at all 
let's see if we can get some life out of this. Uh, this one is doing something. I have a feeling the uh, the uh, beam on the front is supposed to be a little bit more round. It might come with more time. I've, there's a few more capacitors that I need to replace. I've checked a lot of the resistors. They seem to uh, match up with the ratings that are on them. So should be all right. It should be quite straightforward. So in the next video, hopefully this will be a more, more of a round display and this should kick into life. And then we're gonna try and repurpose them for something. Maybe uh, for, I don't know, it could be for anything. So we've got it set up over here now. There's a microphone. It's got a little bit, a couple of holes. I've got to clean it up a little bit, a little description, but that is it. It's right there, it's right there. And then one day, hopefully, we'll get the other one going as well uh, in, the, in the near future. And also, whilst we're here, we got this one up and running. Look how good that looks. It's mahoosive. Anyway, yeah, I hope you had a good one. Take care. Maybe pop over and see this if you're interested. Lovely jubbly. <laughs>